Hey, it's Chris here, and this is my review of the Flare 58, a fully manual lever espresso machine that has a few extra tricks up its sleeve. First, I do want to leave a disclaimer that this was sent to me for free, but no money exchanged hands, all opinions are my own, and Flare did not get to review this video before it goes live. Before we continue with this video, consider dropping a like and subscribing if you aren't already if you're into that sort of thing. As always, timestamps will be in the description down below, as well as all of my usual links including my gear and my Patreon. So if you want to help support my channel to keep making videos like this, be sure to go and check that out. Okay, so this is the Flare 58, and I've been using it for about a month now. This is a fully manual lever espresso machine with an electric heating component that'll run you $530 brand new. So first, let's talk about the build quality. The Flare 58 is made of what feels like a solid steel metal with a really nice and smooth matte black finish. The entire machine breaks down into about three main pieces with a few extras. First, you've got the base of the entire machine, this long lever portion, and the electronically heated group head. These are the three main parts. In addition to that, you also have the pressure gauge, a rubber drip tray that fits a scale like the Akaya Lunar like a glove, an included portafilter with basket and tamper, and this control box and power supply as well as a rubber heating cap that I seem to have misplaced. The T-shaped handle features a rubber grip and some wooden end caps as well. Again, this is not what the production model will look like. It will look like this instead. So the entire machine assembled weighs a little over three kilos. The base is about 35 centimeters deep by 19 centimeters wide. Taking into account the lever, it measures roughly 62 centimeters or about two feet tall with the lever extended all the way up and it's about 40 centimeters deep from tip of the handle to the rear of the machine with the lever extended all the way down. This means that it's pretty unlikely you'll be able to use it under a standard kitchen cabinet. For size reference, this is what it looks like next to the Rocket Apartamento, and this is what it looks like next to the Gaggia Classic Pro. All the different pieces feel nice and dense, they have a nice weight to them, with the exception of the portafilter which I'll touch on in a sec. The included tamper is surprisingly small, and it's not a precision tamper, but then again, you probably won't find a precision tamper with products that do include a free one anyway. In fact, for a free tamper, I'd say it's actually not too bad, especially compared to the really cheap plastic one that comes with the Gaja Classic Pro. The machine also does come with a little plastic tamper, which honestly is not very enjoyable to use, so I'm just gonna throw that away. The portafilter, on the other hand, feels a little bit lightweight and cheap. Despite looking pretty nice and being made out of wood, the handle has a weird hollow feeling to it, and maybe I'm just being nitpicky here since I'm so used to my all-metal Posado portafilter, but that's just something I noticed. At the end of the day, it does function like it should, and doesn't really make a difference with regards to your shot quality. Maybe the only other thing I want to mention here with the build is that the instruction manual sort of implies that the group head will stay locked by simply slotting it in and turning it. In reality, or at least depending on how tightly you tend to lock your portafilter, you might need a small allen key to really lock it in place. Otherwise, this can happen. Now for now, let's move on to the experience of using this machine, and I'll start by guiding you through pulling a shot from start to finish, and I'll do that using my point of view style camera. Okay, so honestly, using this is pretty straightforward. In fact, if we're going from completely off to heated up and ready to go, the flare is faster than any espresso machine I own, including the Rocket and the Gaja Classic Pro. You're essentially waiting for as long as it takes your water to boil. So here I have the machine turned on and set to the middle heat setting. I'll prep my 19 gram dose just like I would on my Rocket or any other espresso machine, dose it into the port filter, lock it in, 
pour in water fresh off the kettle just until it covers the opening. I'll add in the plunger, hook it onto the lever, add my cup and scale, and start to pull. The included booklet says to aim for about a 25 to 30 second extraction in the espresso pressure range, which is pretty much exactly what, what you'd want from a typical shot of espresso from a machine like the Rocket or Gaggia. Once you've reached your desired weight, pull the lever up just a bit and it'll immediately cut off the flow. And just like that, we've pulled a really great shot of espresso. When you're done, just be sure to add a little cup underneath to catch the remaining liquid. I tend to push the remaining liquid through the puck, which I found helps dry it out, and then I'll pull the lever all the way back up. Emptying out the portafilter is pretty much the same as you would do on a standard espresso machine, so yes, a knockbox will be a necessity. You'll notice that I also have been using this puck screen which is sold separately for $35. I found that it helps keep the puck drier, keeps the group cleaner, and generally seems to improve the dispersion of water over my shots. In fact, I've been using this a lot too with my Rocket Apartamento. So finally, unhook and remove the plunger, and that's it. So now let's get into more details. Now by far one of the biggest complaints with the original flares was the heating element, or lack thereof. While I personally have no experience with older flare models, I have read that a lot of people needed to sort of soak the pieces of their flare in hot water prior to using it. So let's go over the new added heating element to this flare. So once you have your machine fully built and connected to power, you're going to turn the electrical component on and off using this little included controller. Long press the right button to turn it on, and from there you can choose between three different heating modes, low, medium, and high, by pressing the right button an additional time. To find out exactly what this holds temperature to and how well, I did a couple tests. I locked in my portafilter with a blind basket to prevent water from coming out and used an instant read thermometer in my testing. These tests were conducted with several hours between them so that the machine has been completely cooled down between the tests. I also left the plunger and the portafilter locked in during the heat up process with the machine each time. For my first test, I turned on the flare to each of the individual heat settings. I waited for the audible beep sound to indicate that it was ready, then poured in 98 degrees Celsius water. I found that filling up this little reservoir until just at the opening of where the plunger sits has a roughly 80 gram capacity. I measured the results on my instant read thermometer and recorded them manually over a period of about a minute 20 seconds. I did the same test again, but this time waiting 10 minutes from completely off to brewing. Now before I show you guys the final results, here are a few things to note about this test. One, since I measured this using an instant read thermometer, I couldn't use the plunger, which then means that some heat is inevitably lost through the top. And two, the water closer to the top of the chamber is significantly hotter than at the bottom. Since I did these tests by sticking the instant read thermometer into the bottom of the chamber, the temps measured a little bit cooler than what you might experience in actual use. Okay, so here are the results. The graph on the left shows us the temps taken shortly after the beep of the machine goes off, and the graph on the right shows the temps after a 10 minute heat soaking period, which is what Flare recommends you do. You can also see with the blue line how drastic of a difference this heating element actually makes. Another cool thing you can do if you have the fellow stag kettle is to actually let the group head sit on top of the kettle while it's boiling water, and this also helps heat it up. Andrew from the Flare Espresso team shared this tip with me when we went live on Instagram about a week ago, and I'll leave a link to that session in my description down below. Now having standardized parts and the ability to use my own portafilter, my own baskets, and my own dosing sizes, and prepping my portafilter like I normally would for my rocket is pretty fantastic. The Flare 58 has its new name, of course, due to the fact that it uses a standard 58mm portafilter. In fact, I usually use my nice Posado portafilter with this machine. Unfortunately, it is not compatible with all 58mm portafilters. I was able to test this with my Rockets portafilter, which works perfectly fine, and my Gaggia's portafilter. This one was a little bit unusual. The Gaggia portafilter, from what I understand, is proprietary to Gaggia but it does seem to work by slotting in the portafilter at 9 o'clock and locking it in at 6 o'clock, unlike the intended way of slotting it in at 6 and locking it in at 3. Another thing I really like about being able to use custom portafilters is just the cosmetic change you can have to your setup, which personally is something I value a lot in my coffee bar. So the nature of this being a manual lever machine of course means that you get to control your extraction much more carefully. As someone who's never had the opportunity to use a machine with pressure profiling capabilities, or even really used a manual lever machine before at all, this was a very new and very unique element for me to control my shots with. Going from simply trusting my shots to be pulled at a perfect 9 bars on my Gaja or Rocket, 
Now I can control that aspect myself. In fact, I've been really enjoying pulling shots at a lower six bars of pressure. Pulling the lever to extract a shot will of course require force, but it's nothing overly strenuous. I found that pulling a shot on my coffee bar feels perfectly natural, but pulling a shot on this higher 40 inch tall table feels a little bit awkward. So that's just something to consider if you purchase this machine and think about where you'll be placing it. This machine pulls some incredible shots, just as good and sometimes even better than the rocket because of the added control I have over the pressure. Dialing in on this is pretty easy too. I keep most of the variables the same to begin the dial-in process, which includes the heat setting, the water temperature, and pressure at around 9 bars. Then all I adjust is the grind size to taste, and I found that the 25 to 30 second range is usually a good sweet spot to hit. You also have the ability to mess with pre-infusions, different water temperatures, and of course, pressure profiling, all of which are controls that are usually found on much more expensive espresso machines. So now let's talk about pulling back-to-back -back shots. It's honestly not as slow as I thought it would be compared to using a machine like the Rocket. Obviously, due to the nature of the machine, it is still a little bit slower. I will do a full point of view style side-by-side -side workflow comparing the workflow of this to my Rocket to the Gagia in a future video, but for now, I'll just talk about it. So really the only different thing you'd be doing on this machine versus say the Rocket is pulling out the plunger and refilling the water. Other than that, the rest of the procedure is the same, including dosing and prepping your portafilter. Cleaning on this machine is pretty easy. The only exception I can think of here is that if you tend to lock in portafilters pretty tight like I do, you'll want to keep an Allen key handy to unlock the group. Once that part is done, it's easy to clean. In fact, I found that you don't really need to clean that frequently depending on how you're using the flare. As long as you don't pull the lever up too much immediately after a shot, you won't get too much of the grounds pulled through the screen, and even less so if you're using a puck screen. In fact, I went nearly the entire month before taking it apart to clean, just so I can see how easy it would be to clean. Which, by the way, it is. Once the group head is removed, all you have to do is give it a thorough rinse, and maybe even toss in some kafiza if you really want to clear out any of the coffee oils or residue. Now, unlike some of the older flare models, this was not designed with portability in mind. There's no included travel case either. And while it does break down into a couple pieces, you will need to bring some tools like Allen keys and have some sort of dedicated case or method of transporting it. In fact, during my testing period, I was bringing the flare back and forth from my place to my girlfriend's for a few weeks and found that it fits nicely inside my carry-on suitcase. Now for some people, including myself at first, I didn't know why this was designed without portability in mind, given that that's an aspect of why flare machines are so loved to begin with. But as flares foray into stationary espresso machines, this really is quite perfect for that. Maybe my only change would be to have a bigger and sturdier base with maybe a metal drip tray, but that's just what I'd personally like. Okay, so now let's move on to some of the things that I don't like about this machine. First, like a lot of other, even significantly heavier machines suffer from, everything moves when you lock in the portafilter. This isn't a massive issue and it's not really any fault of its own, given that even sometimes on my rocket I can shift that machine a tiny bit, and that's a 50 pound machine. This is likely more so due to the nature of locking in the portafilter and maybe my personal tendency to go a little bit tighter than most on this. Another small thing I don't like is having to use an Allen key to lock the group head and unlock it for cleaning, especially since the instructions seem to imply it should lock on its own. But then again, that could just be a me thing. Another small gripe is the cheaper feeling portafilter, but that's really just a cosmetic thing. And my last big issue with this is probably the power supply just because it's a little bit large and unsightly. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of ways of mitigating this, especially if you're designing a single product to be sold around the world. But all in all, honestly, there's not a lot of big dislikes about this machine. It pulls great shots, it looks good, it's easy to clean, and it has a very simple workflow. Alright, so first, let's compare the Flare 58 to the competition. For a similar $450 to $500-ish price range, you can also pick up machines like the Gadget Classic Pro, which you all know I love, or something like the Breville Bambino Plus, both of which are fully electric machines with Steam Wands too. So here's what you're getting with the flare that you were not getting with the other machines. First, you're getting a standardized 58mm portafilter. You get pressure profiling, and you get some kind of a PID option given you have a variable temperature controlled kettle. And finally, you get simplicity. I say this because unlike the other machines with a lot more moving parts and electrical components, it's unlikely to have issues on the flare like you would with those machines. You shouldn't ever really need to worry about scale buildup, or clogging, or troubleshooting when something goes wrong internally, and I think that that's something I really like about fully manual or lever machines in general. So now what you don't get is steam for milk, of course. 
automatic shot pulling. And I mean, if you're in the market for a lever machine anyway, you probably aren't looking at either of these things. While I personally have no experience with any other lever machine on the market, I will say that none of them seem to have the same feature set that the 58 does, especially with regards to being able to use standardized parts and baskets. So who is the Flare 58 for? First of all, it's definitely not for those in the market for an electric machine with milk steaming capabilities. However, this machine does pair great with something like the Nanofoamer, which I also have a full review on. The Flare 58 is the perfect machine for control freaks, or people who really enjoy tweaking every aspect of their espresso. You have pressure profiling, some kind of PID-ish control if you have a temperature controlled kettle, and you can choose your own dosing size with standardized parts. The Flare 58 is great if you exclusively drink straight espresso, and is even fine for multiple workflows in a row. This machine is also great if you don't need the portability aspect of the other flare models. It's still relatively small and can be easily packed away flat if you wanted to hide it for whatever reason. And while it's not designed to be portable, it still definitely is a lot more portable than say my Gajia or the Rocket. The Flare 58 is an incredible machine. It's well designed, it's well built, it pulls insanely good shots with a massive level of control. It's easy to clean and is somewhat portable if you really need it to be. Now keep in mind that this is also my first lever machine. This might be a more subjective thing, but the feeling of manually pulling your own shot and having it come out tasting amazing is unique to lever machines, and I think it's sort of a personal feeling that you won't get on a machine by pressing a button. Wow, that's actually really good. Since owning this machine, I've found myself equally going back and forth with some days just wanting the simplicity of pushing a machine or flicking a lever on my rocket, and other days I've enjoyed slowing down and going through the whole process of pulling a shot with the Flare 58. The Flare 58 will continue to live on my coffee bar next to the rocket as a permanent addition to my station. So anyways, that is it for my review of the Flare 58. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section down below, and I will try to answer as many as I can. Of course, I will also have future videos covering different topics with the Flare 58. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram for some coffee pictures and updates, and check out my Patreon if you want to help support the channel. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you aren't already for more coffee content. And I will see you in the next one.